what host, what meaning, you know, yeast, E. coli, or other organisms, what, what are you going to pick and why? Um, and for several of these, right, there's not one right answer. Um, there's probably a good way to justify multiple organisms. Um, has, has your product been min made um, in the literature in general or, or in that organism? And if so, you know, what was the pathway to get there? Um, can you, related to today's and next time's topic, think about um, some kind of flux analysis um, or, or propose what one might do to determine what genes um, need to be modified in order to increase flux towards that product. Um, and then are you picking an organism, say in some cases there's already an organism out there, a really unusual one that makes your product. I think earlier in the course we talked about how, um, you know, sometimes there's like a, a deep sea vent organism or uh, something out of like a very extreme geyser-like um, environment that maybe it has an unusual product that it makes. Um, you might find that those organisms would be really difficult to work with. Um, having some sense, trying to look briefly in the literature to see what, what's available to, to manipulate that organism would be helpful. Um, and so then in terms of, of like details, really um, as this course progresses and we're gonna, we're gonna cover some of these topics soon, um, we've already covered rate limiting enzymes in different ways to do directed evolution or rational protein engineering. So I think a useful way for you to connect those lectures and this project is trying to figure out, well, all right, let's say I have this company set up and the money, how, if I'm really gonna try to improve the production of this product, which enzyme am I gonna focus on? Or am I gonna focus on regulation? Um, or, or do I need to think about how toxic either the final product or an intermediate is? Um, and there's strategies that we've already talked about and more to come uh, about how to deal with those. Um, and then just kind of focusing more on synthetic biology, even though it might relate to, to how you overcome bottlenecks. Um, it'd be good for you to think about um, what's something that is, is considered more of a synthetic biology tool, um, some kind of intervention um, that is not just your sort of flux analysis uh, techniques that you could put into your strain um, to make it perform better. Um, so that's 70% of what the group project is about. But like I said, um, you know, just thinking about the strain and everything at a cellular level is maybe not the complete outcome of this class. Um, we want you to be able to, to apply your chemical engineering perspectives too. And I recognize that, you know, for some of you, you are further along in the, in the curriculum, you, you have something like senior design, which would help. So I don't want to, you know, I, I'm not going to weight that too heavily. It's just 20% here. And some of it still relates a big chunk of it to your, your actual fermenter. So then you're thinking more at the reactor scale. Um, how would you get your product out? And when you get your product out and do kind of a first pass separation, that's probably not uh, you know, clean enough, pure enough for whatever your application might be. So then there's this other component of purification. And like any chemical engineer, you know, we always like to see some kind of a simplified process flow diagram. Um, so I think you know, generally this set of information is stuff that the CAG curriculum has you thinking a lot about anyway. And hopefully it's an opportunity to, to briefly put that together. Lastly, um, maybe what you spend less time thinking about, also maybe a small component of senior design, I'm not sure, um, but something I think is, is really relevant um, is so much of metabolic engineering now is about trying to find the right markets and trying to really justify products, not just because you can make a really high theoretical amount, but because there's actually a growing demand or a real untapped opportunity um, where it's just really competitive compared to the petroleum-based process. Um, so thinking a little bit about these areas, um, this is not going to be something that you're, you're judged on highly, but it's, it's just an opportunity to, um, uh, to, to make things seem realistic and sort of complete the perspective. Um, any, any other questions? 
so far. Okay. Um, so, uh, <laughs> before the class was virtual, and still, um, I thought one of the more useful things about an undergraduate education in general um, and about electives is that they can be an opportunity, particularly with our small class size, to hone and refine your softer skills that, are, that sometimes make the biggest difference in your career trajectories. Um, so I want there to be a written and an oral component to this project. Um, that's also why for all of you, except for the one grad student, um, there's also a group or team element um, to this because those kind of skills are also important. Um, I think now that, you know, we're, we're virtual, I want the, uh, the report should probably be a bigger part um, of the process just because really hard to judge a virtual presentation. Um, might also be a, a more awkward, I don't know. Um, but, you know, we'll still do both. Um, I've laid out some criteria for like, you know, what the report and the presentation would be judged by. Um, and really, I think, you know, it's, it's everything that is sort of listed in these sections of metabolic engineering, bioprocess design, commercialization overview, uh, but intended to make it clear that, you know, what, I, what I'm hoping for at the end of the semester isn't just like a list, uh, like a bulleted list of here are my answers to these questions. Um, I think it'll be really interesting if you, if you actually have it written like, you know, here's, uh, take the rose example, or I'll pick vanillin actually, just because I've done a lot of work with that. Um, if you started off by like saying, you know, this is how much vanilla we use in the world. And this is why the way that we ordinarily get it isn't very sustainable. We're proposing a way to like do this so that we have, you know, uh, security of a, a, of a food, basically a food additives security supply um, so that in the event of like uh, any kind of climate change or even just natural seasonal changes in places like Madagascar and Mexico, we don't see all of our vanilla supply suddenly disappear um, or get really marked up. Um, and you could also comment on uh, taking the same example. Um, extraction from the vanilla bean is something that uses this many like hundreds of thousands of gallons of water to like grow it and to and these harsh chemicals to extract it and so instead a, a, a metabolic engineering process is like efficient and uh, environmentally friendly um, and we have a plan for doing it um, or at least for improving it uh, you know with these kind of parameters. Um, so something that's like framed to, to tell an interesting story um, and has things like references and, and some calculations um, and, and interesting ideas across all of the uh, topics that were mentioned um, will get you, I guess, a, a higher, um, higher grade, um, relatively speaking, compared to just like a list of, of the answers. Um, so I won't go over all the, the presentation criteria, but that's also 